so for our players, you know, outside of what we do in the gym, uh, our players are involved in a lot of other activities. Um, you know, most of them will take advantage of study abroad. Uh, almost all of them will be involved in the Greek system. Um, you know, many of them will be involved in other clubs and organizations and activities. Uh, they'll do internships. Um, you know, take various classes. Um, you know, especially in the off season that um, expose them to some different um, areas of academia that they might not normally be exposed to if they were just taking classes in their majors. So, you know, again, I think that's uh, one of the big benefits of a liberal arts education is you get exposed to so many different areas. And so a lot of our players end up actually picking up minors um, in, you know, the arts or the languages or things along those lines that they didn't plan on uh, when they were coming in. But because they have the opportunity to try those classes out, uh, they, they fall in love with them and, and that provides them a, an additional opportunity. I think it's very supportive uh, would be my first uh, word. We, we talk a lot about family. Uh, our players do a great job of helping one another, um, upholding our team standards, uh, giving and, and receiving feedback from one another. Um, you know, we make it a point to know our, each other as individuals, um, you know, especially between the classes. Uh, you know, within the classes, there's a really special bond there because of arriving on campus that freshman year before everyone else and spending those first two to three weeks together. I think that creates a really special bond within each class. But then between the classes, our older players take such pride in helping the younger players. And then that just gets passed down from generation to generation because you know our current seniors still are really appreciative of what the, the seniors, when they were freshmen, did for them. And so they want to do that this year. Uh, you know, we had a really good conversation this summer with our senior class about that, uh, with, you know, everything going on uh, with cancellations of sports and, and adjustments to athletics at the collegiate level due to coronavirus. Uh, we've had to sort of adjust some of our, our goals for this year, but that was one that our senior class was very committed to, was making sure they left a legacy on the program through their ability to help the younger players uh, adapt to college, learn about the program, and set them up for success in the future. One of the questions we get a lot is, uh, you know, what sort of expectations do we have on players and what are we looking for in our recruits aside from their physical skills, um, you know, and, and their volleyball skills. And for us, it's really, we want someone who wants to be the best they can be, uh, whatever that ends up being and whatever role that lands them on our team. We're not necessarily looking for every player on our team to have one and only singular goal of you know, themselves becoming an All-American or setting records or anything like that. Uh, we want every player in our program to want to be the best player they can be. And then we strive to help our players maximize their potential and become the best they can be. And we talk you know, all the time in our program about getting 1% better every day. It's something we say every day during practice, uh, during meetings, uh, during games, you know, every time we're together. Uh, we want to make sure that we're trying to get at least one percent better um, you know and you don't see that necessarily from day to day but i think anytime we talk to seniors you know say hey remember what you looked like when you were a freshman or we even go back and watch video of them from their freshman year and and they just really realize how much better they have they've gotten throughout their time here um, so that's our goal for each player as a coaching staff and so we want players who really buy into that that understand okay, I'm going to put you know, my development in the coaching staff's hands. I'm going to do what they ask me to do, and that's going to allow me to become the best player I can be. And then whatever role I'm in, that will allow me to maximally contribute to the team's success. I mean, so we have a lot of uh, areas that we focus on aside from what we do um, in the gym where we want our players to be successful. Obviously, you know, academics is definitely one of them. You know, we set an annual goal to achieve the ABCA Team Academic Award for a team GPA in excess of 3.3, which we've won, I believe, eight years in a row now. Um, and so that's something that our players, you know, it's definitely become kind of a tradition and, and they take a lot of pride in striving for and achieving that goal. Um, and then we have, you know, we have a, a pyramid of success. You know, we sort of uh, borrowed or, or sampled the idea from John Wooden uh, in the UCLA men's basketball program, but we've, we've changed the blocks to fit what we feel is important. And so, you know, we want to, things that we talk about it is treating everyone with respect, having positive relations with people, um, learning good communication skills, trust, honesty, integrity, um, you know, embracing challenges. You know, that's something we talk to our players about all the time is, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's what college is all about. Um, you're going to be challenged in the classroom. You're going to be challenged in the volleyball arena. You're going to be challenged 
probably in the social scene, you're gonna be challenged because you're on your own away from home and have to manage your own time and your own life. So, you know, we, we push our players in all those areas and, and oftentimes um, expect them uh, or almost want them to fail, again, in a situation where the consequences aren't dire uh, because we feel like you learn a lot from failure. So we're definitely constantly pushing our players and asking them to push themselves in all aspects of their lives. Yeah, so a typical day for one of our student athletes in season uh, will vary a little bit from day to day, um, you know, but you're probably looking at anywhere between two and five hours of class. Uh, you know, generally our players take classes earlier in the day. It's not always possible, but for the most part, they're in class between 8.30 and 3.30 or so. Uh, you know, we will have some labs that go a little bit later than that, and we might have a player, uh, especially an older player who's in a smaller major who has to take a course that goes a little bit later in the afternoon, a couple days a week. But for the most part, that's, that's when the players are in class. Uh, we will typically have a two to two and a half hour practice in the late afternoon, early evening, uh, you know, between 3.30 and 7, again, depending on the day and what the players' class schedules look like. Uh, we will play uh, a couple days a week, so generally we'll have a match either Tuesday night or Wednesday night, and then most weekends we will play Friday and Saturday. Uh, Sundays will be an off day for the players, and then we will typically lift weights usually two days a week uh, in season as well, and, and that'll be scheduled somewhat on their own they'll be in a small group we won't lift as a team so based on what their class schedule allows uh, with open time slots uh, we'll make sure that, that they they find a time in a group that works with their with their slot or with their schedule um, so out of season you know it'd be a little bit less of a time commitment um, still probably looking at five days a week uh, but but shorter durations you know we will do strength and conditioning typically three days a week for about an hour um, and then um, you know, two days we'll do some like speed, agility, plyometrics type training, and those are gonna be even shorter, you know, 20 to 40 minutes depending on the day. And then our captains will typically run open gyms a couple days a week where the nets are up, the balls are out, and whoever shows up and wants to play or serve or pass or hit around, whatever, uh, they have the option to do that. Uh, we get a five week spring practice season where the coaches are allowed in the gym with the players which for us is generally in the month of March, and we get 16 practices during that month. Um, you know, during that part of the year, uh, we still are lifting weights, but we're not doing the open gyms uh, or the strength and, or the speed and agility sessions. So, um, and that'll carry through to the, to the summer, and then wherever our players go in the summer, you know, we have a strength and conditioning program. We ask them to follow uh, wherever they are. Uh, some players have uh, access to a full gym and, and have no problem. Others don't, and uh, so if they don't, we, we you know, send them some sort of adjustment with body weight workouts or uh, a lot of jumping or some stretch bands or whatever they have available to them so that they can continue uh, to improve themselves physically and, and get ready for the upcoming season. That's a, a, you know, a question I get often as well is, you know, what is your coaching style? What is your coaching philosophy? I think from a philosophy perspective, um, it's all about the player's experience. You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but wanting each player to be the best they can be. Uh, they each only get four years uh, to play college volleyball. I've already coached longer than that. So it's not about me, it's about them. And so we empower our players to sort of set the course of where we're going to go each season. You know, they get to set the goals. But once the goals are set, then we, you know, we let them know that, okay, that's going to guide the decision-making process of the coaching staff. And everything that we do is going to try to help us achieve the goals that you have set. Um, and it may not be the decisions you would have made, but... Those are the decisions that we feel are best to help us achieve those goals. You know, we're all about improvement uh, of our individual players. We feel like it's the coaching staff's job to recruit the best players we possibly can. Um, but whoever those players end up being and whatever their ability level, it's our job to help them become better. Um, and so that's really what we focus on is providing opportunities for players to get better. Uh, a lot of video, a lot of stats, uh, wins and losses are kept in the practice gym. We make individual sessions available. Um, we will give every opportunity to every player uh, to spend as much time as they want uh, within the NCAA regulations to make themselves the best player they can be. Um, you know, we are, I also feel that, you know, from a, from a style perspective, you know, we're not motivators, we're coaches. So if, if someone's not motivated to be in the gym and not giving uh, their best effort, then you know, they're, they're asked to leave the gym uh, in, a, in a very kind way. But, you know, we want people who show up ready to work every day and ready to get better. Um, so we're not in the, in the business of motivating. We don't have a ton of rules. 
We just ask people to be on time uh, and to give their best effort. Um, anything aside from that, we feel it's the coach's job to help the players uh, improve. Uh, we feel it's the player's responsibility to be on time and to give the best effort they can be. Um, you know, again, more on an X's and O's type of, of coaching style uh, or coaching philosophy. We believe in playing as fast as we can on offense. Uh, again, within our personnel's ability level. So each year that's going to be a little bit different based on how good our first contact ball control is, uh, how high our setter's point of contact is, how efficient our outside hitters are on three-step approaches, how efficient our middles are on two-step approaches, so on and so forth. Uh, but we want to play as fast as we can where we can be efficient and effective but not making a ton of errors. Uh, we try to be as aggressive as we can with our serve and our block scheme, and we coordinate those two to really try to limit uh, the opponent's options um, on first swing side out so that we can create a rally. That's really our, our whole goal when we're serving. Create a rally, give ourselves a 50-50 chance to win that point. Um, you know, and then defensively, we, we, uh, we try to play as many different defenses as we can. Uh, we're more concerned with the individual uh, defensive ability of our players and maximizing their individual range and their individual skill. Um, and then we can place them in multiple different places on the floor based on the situation. Um, but we want them to be the best individual defenders they can be. Yeah, we've been very fortunate to have a lot of success in our program. I think we've had a lot of great players. Uh, I've had a lot of great assistant coaches. We have a great product to sell here uh, in Washington and Lee University. Uh, we have a fantastic brand new facility now that's going to help us in recruiting as well. Um, so we've been very fortunate. We have had a lot of success. You know, we've, uh, we've won 16 ODAC championships. Uh, you know, I've coached here 20 years. We've been in the ODAC championship match um, in 17 of those 20 years. Um, you know, we've made NCAA appearances 13 of my 20 seasons here. Uh, we've reached the Sweet 16 one time. We've had countless all ODAC, all region, all American players. Um, you know, we play a very, a very difficult schedule. I believe we've been ranked in the top eight in our region uh, every year that I've been the head coach here. Um, so, you know, we're definitely one of the better teams in the region, uh, knocking on the door of being one of the better teams nationally, and, and that's what we're working towards, you know, every day and every year is to try to continue to improve that and hopefully one day win a national championship. Uh, so that's, that's what we're working towards. Yeah, for us, our recruiting timeline uh, is going to be a little bit earlier maybe than, than some sports and maybe earlier than some other Division three schools. Uh, you know, we'll generally spend a lot of time during the sophomore year and early in the junior club season evaluating players. Um, you know, during that winter and spring of the junior year, we'll be trying to get people to campus for official visits. Uh, we'll have a, a camp the summer um, after most of our recruits junior year. So we'll have, you know, rising juniors and rising seniors um, attending that camp. And, um, you know, we'll be looking for academic information from all of those prospects right at the end of their junior year. So, you know, June uh, or maybe even late May, depending on the school, after the junior year so that we can determine, you know, academically if, if they're going to be a good fit uh, along with what we've seen from them volleyball-wise. And then, you know, we'll be looking to, to make offers and, and take verbal commitments in the summer uh, after the junior year. So typically July and early August is a big, busy time for us. Um, and so that's really what we're, we're typically shooting for.